A lot of beginners struggle to learn F2L because of how complicated it is, but by watching this video, learning F2L will be as simple as following a flowchart. F2L is the second step of the CFOT method, which is the most popular method for solving the Rubik's Cube quickly. In this step, you go from having just the cross solved to having the first two layers completely solved. You do this by solving F2L pairs, which are made of one corner that has your cross color on it, and one edge which has the other two colors on the corner. Because you solve two pieces at a time instead of one, F2L lets you solve a lot faster than the beginner's method. In order to help you learn F2L much more easily, I made a flowchart that you can use to solve any possible F2L pair you could get in a solve. The link to this flowchart will be in the description, and you can download it onto your phone or print it out so that you can practice F2L anywhere. By following the flowchart, you should be able to do F2L with just a little bit of practice, but just in case you need a little extra help, I'll be going through the entire thing in this video along with some extra helpful information. The first thing we need to go over are what I call the key F2L inserts. There are two of them, and everything you do in F2L will be about getting your pair into one of these two positions and then using a few simple moves to solve, or insert, the pair from that position. This is the first key insert, which I will call insert 1. You have insert number 1 when your F2L pair is connected. What do I mean by connected? Well, remember how an F2L pair is made up of a corner that goes in the bottom layer and the edge that goes right above it? Well, when the pair is connected, the shared colors on the corner and the edge line up like this, just like how they'd line up when the pair was solved in its slot. To do this insert, you need to move the F2L pair so that both the edge and the corner are on the front side, like this. Then, we can figure out whether you have the right side version of the insert or the left side version. If the white sticker on the corner is facing the left, like it is here, you have the right side version of the insert. In this case, you can put the slot where it needs to go into this front right position, and then do R, U prime, R prime. If the white sticker is on the right, like it is in this case, you have the left side version. For this, the slot can't be in the front right, it needs to be in the front left, like this, and then you can do the insert with L prime, U, L. Insert two is a little bit harder to identify, but over time it will become very easy, just like insert one. Insert two can be identified by these three things. The corner and the edge are both in the top layer, but they are not touching each other. The top colors on the corner and the edge are different, and the corner and the edge are just one move away from being connected like in insert one. Let's go over a few examples. Here's our first example. This pair is not insert two because it doesn't follow the first rule. The corner and the edge are touching here, and rule one says that they can't be touching. Now this case looks a lot like insert two, but this case is also not insert two, because the top colors on the corner and the edge are the same, they're both red, and rule two says that they have to be different. And finally, this case is also not insert two. It follows the first two rules, because the corner and the edge are both in the top layer, they're not touching, and the top colors are different. But watch what happens when we test rule three. If we do the one move, they do not make a connected pair. In this specific case, if the edge were right here instead, then we would have insert two. And later in the video, I'll show you how to move over the edge in cases like this. So once you have insert two, and just to go over it one more time, the corner and the edge are in the top layer, the corner and the edge have top colors that are different, and you're one move away from having a connected pair, once you have those three things, you have insert two, and you need to figure out which version you have. And you can do that by putting the corner in the front and seeing if the white sticker will be on the side when the corner is in the front right or the front left. In this case, it's on the side when the white corner is in the front right. So in this case, this is where the corner belongs, in the front, where the white sticker is on the side and the slot is right underneath it in the front right. And then we can insert this pair with R, U, R prime. Here is the left version of it. In this case, when the corner is on the front, the white sticker is on the side when the corner is on the front left. 
If it were on the front right, then white would be facing towards us, just to be clear. So it needs to be in the front left here. The slot needs to be right underneath it. So if it were right here, you'd move it over like that. And you can insert this pair with L prime, U prime, L. Now that we have the key inserts out of the way, let's go over how to get any F2L pair into one of those positions. Your F2L will start in this kind of position. It looks chaotic, but what we have is your solved cross on bottom and nothing else. The very first step of F2L will be finding two pieces that make an F2L pair. And remember, the two pieces that make up an F2L pair are the corner, which has white on it, or whatever your cross color is, and the edge that goes right above it. So we have an F2L pair right here. We have the white, green, and red corner, which belongs right here. The edge that goes right above it will be the green and red edge, which is right here. So now we have our pair. The next step are both pieces in the top layer. In this case, they are not. In your case, if they are, you can skip this step. But if they are not, what you need to do is put the whatever piece it is in the front right slot like this by rotating the cube around, and you can move it into the top layer with R, U prime, R prime. One thing to be careful about here is that if I were doing it from this position and I did R, U prime, R prime, that would put my corner into the bottom layer, which just undoes what I just did by moving out the edge. So whenever you're doing R, U prime, R prime to take out a piece, make sure that one of the other F2L pieces isn't in either of these positions. So right here where it was, it was completely fine. So then we're just going to do R, U prime, R prime to take it out. Now that we've done that, we need to put the pair slot into the front right. So this is the red and green pair. So the red and green slots right here. We'll rotate the cube so that it's in the front right position and then move the corner over the slot. The corner is right here. This is the position right over the slot. So we will move the corner like that. Now, the next step, are the pieces connected incorrectly? And what I mean by that is that they're touching in any way that isn't a connected pair like we went over earlier. So in this case, they are. If they're not, you can skip ahead again. But if you do have a pair that's connected incorrectly, you can have one of two situations. The edge can either be to the left of the corner, like it is here, or to the right. In this case, we have it to the left, so what we're going to do is rotate to this position and do U, L prime, U, L. And now we have a pair where they are not connected. We can go back to this position and continue. If you did have a pair where they were connected and the edge was to the right of the corner this time, you'd stay in this position and disconnect them with U prime, R, U prime, R prime. And then you can continue. Now the next step is to figure out if the white sticker on your corner is facing up. And in this case, I've set it up so it is. What you do is pretty simple. Here's the edge, and you can see the top color is red, and the side color is green. So you want to move over the edge so, so that the side color matches the color of a center. So here it doesn't match because it's green and blue. If I move it over here, it does match green and green. So now we're in this position. Now this edge would be solved if it moves down here. So for this step, we move it away from where it needs to go, and then we can move the corner over the edge. So this is the position right on top of the edge. Now the pair is connected, and then you can move the edge back down into the top layer, and now you have insert number one and you can just insert that pair. But let's say that the white sticker on the corner wasn't facing up. Then what you do is you move the U layer in a direction so your corner will end up either here or here, and it will end up in whichever position you can still see the white sticker. So right here, if we move it here, we can still see the white sticker, so this is the correct position. In this case, this is not the correct position because we can't see the white sticker now. So we go to this position, and now we need to figure something out. Are the top colors on the corner and the edge the same or different? In this case, they are different. So what we do here is we turn the layer where the white sticker is, 
In this case, the white sticker is on this red side, so we turn that, moving the corner into the bottom layer. And now we want to move the edge over to be across from where this corner was. It was right here, so the position across from it was right here. Move it down like that, move over the edge, and then you move the corner back into the top layer, and now you have insert number two. But let's say we got into this position, and here the top colors are the same. Here we do something very similar. We're going to look at the side where this white sticker is. It's on the red side again here. So we're going to move down the red side so that the corner is in the bottom layer. And instead of moving the edge over to be across from where the corner was, we're going to move it to be right next to where it was. So the corner was right here. We're going to move the edge to right there and then move the corner back into the top layer. And now we have insert number one again. So that is how you would solve that F2L pair. Now let's continue with the rest of the pairs on this solve. First step, find another pair. And here's one right here. We have the white, blue, and red corner, and the blue and red edge. These make an F2L pair. Are both pieces in the top layer? Yes, they are. So now we need to put the pair slot into the front right. Here it is, because blue and red centers for the blue and red pair and put the corner over the slot. There we go. Are the pieces connected incorrectly? No, they're not. They are not touching each other, so they are not connected incorrectly. So we can skip ahead again. Is the white sticker on the corner facing up? No. So we need to move the U layer in a direction so we can still see the white sticker. This way is not the correct way, once again, because we can't see it right here, which means that this is the correct position. Now we continue again. Are the top colors on the corner and the edge the same or different? They are the same, which means white sticker is on the blue side here. So we move down the blue side. The edge needs to be moved over next to where the corner was. Then we can move the corner back up into the top layer. And here we have insert number one again. Just as a reminder, we look at it and figure out whether we have the lefty or righty version by moving the whole pair into the front side. Because the white sticker is facing to the right here, we have the left version, so it needs to go into the front left slot with L prime U L. Okay, let's do that again. Find an F2L pair, and here we have one. We have white, green, and orange, and the green and orange edge. Are both pieces in the top layer? Yes, so we put the pair slot into the front right. Here's the green and orange slot right here in the front right and move the corner over the slot. There we go. Are the pieces connected incorrectly? And yes, they are. They are touching, but they are not a connected pair. So now we need to figure out is the edge to the left or the right of the corner and we can clearly see it's to the right. So we separate the pieces with U prime, R, U prime, R prime. And I'm going to move the corner back over the slot and continue. Is the white sticker on the corner facing up? Yes, it is. So what we do here is we look at the edge. The side color here is orange. So we line up the orange with the orange center. We move the edge away from where it needs to go. So it needs to go down here. So we move it up away from where it needs to go. Move the corner over the edge like that, and then move the edge back into the top layer. Here we have insert number one again. So if we look at this, we move both pieces into the front side and the white sticker is facing the left, which means it needs to go into this front right slot with R, U prime, R prime. Last F2L pair is right here. We have white, blue, and orange, and blue and orange. And once again here, we get to skip ahead a lot. The pieces are both in the top layer. So we move the slot to the front right and the corner is already above the slot. They are not connected incorrectly, which means we get to skip ahead again. Is the white sticker facing up on the corner? No, it's not. It is on the side again. So we move the U layer in the direction where we can still see the white sticker, which is this way. Once again, 
the colors on top are the same. So we move this orange side down because that's the side where the white sticker is. Move the edge over to next to where the corner was. The corner is right here, so the edge goes right there. Move the corner back up and we have insert one again. Move it to the front. The white sticker is facing the right, so it's the left version going into this slot with L prime U L. And after four F2L pairs, you will be done with F2L for that solve. So congratulations. If you can follow all of that, you now know F2L. But just to be clear, this is not where you should stop learning. This way of doing F2L is meant to be as simple as possible so you can get a foothold, and then you can become much more efficient from there. As soon as you feel comfortable with everything in this video, you should start looking for different ways to solve F2L pairs better. Some great places to start are by solving F2L pairs into the back as well as the front, and using empty F2L slots to solve pairs so you don't have to cube rotate as much. I'm going to go over both of those things and even more techniques in another video very soon. But I hope this video was very helpful to you guys. I know that learning F2L can be very difficult, and I wanted to make it as simple as possible. If I did, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share the video with anyone you know who's trying to get into speed cubing. I think it can be very helpful to a lot of people. So thank you for watching, I'll see you later. This is Brody, signing out.